Lux presents Hollywood. Lever Brothers Companies, the makers of Lux Flakes, bring you the Lux Radio Theater, starring William Powell and Ann Southern in I Love You Again. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When I came to Hollywood some years ago, my first assignment was dialogue director at Warner Brothers. And my first picture starred an actor whose charm and personality were equaled only by his talent, William Powell. So it's something of a reunion to have him here tonight, co-starred with an actress you've enjoyed so often on the screen, Anne Southern. They bring you Metro Golden Mayor's riotous comedy, I Love You Again. The story of what happens when a man uh, comes to after six years of amnesia or complete forgetfulness and finds himself in very baffling circumstances. In the year since Bill Powell and I first met, the motion picture industry has made great strides in technical improvements, as you've been aware. A trait that's typically American, that constant search for something better. And your response to the new luck. Those tiny diamonds that are so helpful in caring for your fine fabrics is another example of this country's eagerness for something better. Indeed, we're gratified that this new Lux has more than come up to your fondest expectations. Here's Act One of I Love You Again, starring William Powell as Larry Wilson and Anne Southern as Kay. <laughs> an ocean liner approaching New York Harbor is a passenger from Haversville, Pennsylvania, Mr. Lawrence Wilson. An hour ago, he cornered three unfortunate gentlemen in the ship's lounge, and for 60 weary minutes, he's been boring them to death, as only Mr. Lawrence Wilson can. Yes, gentlemen, <coughs> uh, this watch was given to me by the Chamber of Commerce. <clears throat> Pretty fine timepiece, isn't it? Terrific. <laughs> Mr. Uh, L.J. Hotspur himself made the presentation. <laughs> I can remember every word he said. <clears throat> to one of our first and foremost citizens, Lawrence Wilson, for his unfailing energy as chairman of the Haversville Morals and Clean Government Committee. Oh, hmm. fine, fine. I'll bet you're some pumpkins back there in Haversville. Oh, well, you, uh, you know how it is. <laughs> well, gentlemen, last night out... Uh, <clears throat> How about having a farewell drink with me? Uh, Dutch treat, of course. <laughs> I figured that out. Oh, Stuart, Stuart. Uh, service, please. <clears throat> what would it be, fellas? Scotch and soda. Yeah, make mine the same. Well, all right, Stuart. <laughs> uh, you know mine. <laughs> yeah. Ginger ale and grape juice. <laughs> Come on now, Wilson. That's no drink. <laughs> Sorry, fellows, but uh, that's all I ever take. Hi, man. Hello, Ryan. Hi, fellas. I also have a star for Hey, sorry. Come on, star for the drink. Oh, thanks, Ryan, but I don't indulge. Oh, it's too good to drink with me, huh? I, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, good night, gentlemen. Ah, come back here, you. Oh, no, no, go no. Ahead. Take it easy, Ryan. Mm. Mr. Wilson doesn't drink. Now, listen, Wilson. You snooze me long enough on this boat, see? Take off that stuff, Jack. Come on, knock me down. Ryan, you're inebriated. Oh, so I'm an, an, an inebriated, huh? Well, I'll walk a straight line with anyone on this boat. With anyone on any boat. I'll even go out there on the deck and I'll walk along the rail. Here, here, uh, Ryan. Uh, now, don't go out on deck. An inebriated. Now, let go. I'll show you. Ryan, you'll fall overboard. Let go. Get away from that rail. Now, listen, Ryan, old man. Hey, uh, how's that? Right up on the rail, huh? Uh, come down. Uh, come down. You're uh, too intoxicated uh, to realize uh, your peril. Uh, watch this way, Wilson. Try to walk and watch. I can balance myself like a hey, 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 I saw it. I saw the whole thing. That man fell off the rail and Mr. Wilson jumped in to save him. Wilson, the great juice man. He's a hero.
Well, are the passengers all right? I think he will be, Captain. But Mr. Wilson's still unconscious. Unconscious? He had a rather nasty blow on the temple. Mm. How did that happen? I'm not certain, but I believe when your men lowered the boat, one of your sailors accidentally hit him on the head with an oar. <laughs> That's the stuff, Wilson, old boy. Come on. Open your eyes up. Now, wake up now, pal. Come on. Uh, oh. Who are you? It's, it's me, pal. It's your old friend, Ryan. Ryan. You dirty rat, come here. No, no, take it easy, pal. Let go. You slugged me. No, 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 pal. Honest, it wasn't me. It was a sailor with an oar. Sailor with a... Hey. Wait a minute. Why, this is a boat. I'm on a boat. So what's the idea? Why was I taking all that train? What? What train? You know what train, you double-crossing. Oh, wait, wait, look, look. Don't you remember me? Ryan, Doc Ryan. I never saw you before in my life. Holy smoke, but you saved my life last night. Why do I want to do that? I don't know, Mr. Wilson. Huh? What's that you called me? Mr. Wilson, your name. Say, what's going on here? What's happened to me? Well, you took a dive for me last night when I fell overboard. You were socked on the head. You're crazy. I can't swim. And besides, last night I was on my way to the fight in New York. What fight? Don't you read the papers? The Lewis Kahn fight. Say, I must have missed it. I'll say you missed it by six years. Six years? What date's this? Well, here, here's the ship's news. October 10th, 1947. Let me see that. 1947. That must be a misprint. No, pal, honest. But, 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 but wait a minute. It was 1941 last night. Hey, I, I'd better get the ship's doctor. I don't need a doctor. I need a drink. Okay, I'll ring for your ginger ale and grape juice. Ginger ale and... Look, I want a drink, not a foot bath. Well, that's what you've been drinking, buckets of it. Ginger ale and grape juice. Now, look, Mr. Wilson. Say, well, why do you keep calling me Wilson. My name's Davis, George Davis, from Detroit. George Davis, sure. Detroit? Well? You ever know a guy in Detroit named uh, Duke Sheldon? Duke? Sure. Why, well, I used to be in... Uh, in business with him. Why? Why? Because so was I in business with him once. Well, what do you know? We're in the same racket. Yeah, it's possible. What's your pitch? Oh, I've been kind of working the boats, you know, cards, a few tricks with a dice, and the... <laughs> hey, I get it now. You've been working this boat yourself under the name of Wilson. Say, what are you talking about? You know, I remember getting on that train in 1941. I was going to the fight. You mean you ain't got no line on yourself since then? I went into the smoking car. It was a card game. Uh-huh. I was going great till somebody got wise. There was a battle. I fell to the floor. And the last thing I remember is a, a bottle that was sailing through the air, straight at my head. And you don't remember nothing what's happened since then? Not a thing. I don't even know where I've been. Say, there's a name for this thing, for lapse of memory, lost identity, amnesia. That's it, amnesia. Is that what you got? No, that's what I've had. You know, a, a blow on the head can make you forget the past. You live on as, as somebody else. Perhaps forever, unless, unless another shock or a blow brings you back to your right self. You read about these things, but you never figure them out to yourself. Hey, what's this Wilson like? Oh, an awful heel. I like Davis better. Thanks. Yeah, all you did, I mean all Wilson did, was talk about Habersville. Habersville? Who's he? No, no, not he. It. It's some uh, burg in Pennsylvania. Oh, never heard of it. Hey, I wonder if Mr. Wilson has any money. I think I'll take a look at his luggage. <laughs> Funny, ain't it? Here we are talking about you and a guy named Wilson, and you're both guys. Look at this suit. Jeez, I must have bought this from an undertaker. <laughs> now, what's all this stuff? Hair restorer. Saltine crackers, dyspepsia tablets, and a bottle of gargles. Hey, I certainly do, took good care of Wilson. Oh, here's, here's a lot of papers and stuff. Boy, were you a joiner. Rotary, elks, owls, community chest. 
Primrose League? Who? Oh, wait a minute. A bank book. Hey, give it to me. Haberville National Bank. Lawrence Wilson checking account C. $147,000 and 83 cents. One hundred and... Let me look at that. And that's the C account. That means there must be an A and B as well. Yeah, it might even go right through the alphabet. <laughs> Say, why wouldn't it be a good idea for Mr. Wilson to pay a visit to Habersville just long enough to get the money? Huh? Do you think you can swing it? We'll be in New York tomorrow morning. And well, you if can... it's worth trying. But well, there's a fortune in this thing, Doc. How'd you like to go in on it with me? You mean it? Look, I'll cut you in for 25%. I'd have done it for 10. After all, you saved my life. Look, I'm going to need some money. I think I'll send a radiogram to the, the Habersville National Bank. I'll tell them to send me five grand to the Whitney Hotel tomorrow morning. 25% of five grand? <gasps> what a cut! Hey, but there's one thing, Doc. you better stick close to me. Yeah? If anybody starts asking questions, if I seem to be getting into a tight spot... I'll pull a faint. And don't forget to catch me. Oh, you can trust me, pal. I'll be a regular Florence Nightingale. Come on, Doc. Snap into it. We'll get right to the hotel and see if the Habersville Bank has sent that... Well, well. What's the matter? You here I am. Hey, take a, look, take a look at that skirt over there. What a dish. I don't know who she's waving to. Come on, come on. Keep your mind on your work. Larry, oh, Larry. Larry? Why, she's Larry. Hey, that's you. Oh, Larry. Are you all right? Huh? Me? Sure, sure. I'm fine, fine. Uh, 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 how are you? Oh, Larry, the papers all said you were injured. Yeah, oh, oh, nothing serious. You know, you know how papers are. Well, certainly it's good to see you. <laughs> Yes, I know you're surprised. <laughs> Surprise isn't the word. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Larry. Uh, oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, this is Doc Ryan. Doc, this is a... Uh, 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 <laughs> yes, sir. Good old Doc Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Doctor? <laughs> Never better, miss. <laughs> Thanks to Larry. You know, Larry, Habersville is pretty proud of that rescue. Oh, Habersville, huh? Well, well, well. Good old Habersville. <laughs> uh, did you... Uh... Did you uh, just leave there? Well, when I read you were hurt, naturally I had to come. Yes, yeah, naturally, naturally. <laughs> and it certainly is good to see you. <laughs> yes, so you said. Well, it's, it's worth repeating. Larry, uh, you seem strange. Who, me? Oh, well, that's, that's just because you haven't seen me for a while. <laughs> Why, before you know it, we'll, we'll be right back where we were. Larry, what in heaven's name is the matter with you? Nothing. Why? I'm just, uh, just surprised to see you here. Well, what's so surprising about that? Habersville wouldn't think it very proper if a wife didn't meet her husband. Oh, I don't know about... Hmm? Wife? Did you... Did she... Uh, Larry, uh, Larry, what is it? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing at all. I, I'm fine. I, I, I'm just wonderful. Oh, no. No, no, you're not. You're, you're sicker than you think. You need a lot of rest and quiet. Oh, nonsense. I never felt better in my life. I'll take you over to your hotel. Huh? Oh, sure. No, no, no. Listen, Larry. Go away, Doc. Go away. Can't a man speak to his own wife? <laughs> This isn't like you at all, Larry. The Whitney Hotel, a whole suite of rooms. Well, the best is none too good for you, uh, Mrs. Uh, w. Uh, Larry, I don't quite know how to begin. Begin what? Well, I've decided once and for all to go through with the divorce. Divorce? Oh, but now wait. You can't do that. I've made up my mind. Oh, but a divorce, that, 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 that's awful. After all, we, we mustn't be too hasty about this thing. Well, I wouldn't call five years exactly hasty. How about a divorce? Why, it, it, it can break up a marriage. So I've heard. And, and what's more, very often, what, what really seemed a good reason for a divorce isn't a good reason for a divorce after all. Now, if I'd beaten you or uh, something like that... Oh, 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 I'd like to see you try it. Well, or if, uh, if I'd been running around with some woman... Oh, good heavens. You with a woman? Well, after all, you know, sometimes a vacation can change a man a lot. Sea air and all that. 
No, I'm, I'm afraid it'll take more than Sia to change you, Larry. Well, what's the matter with me? Say, look, let's, let's, let's forget the divorce and try it just once more. Starting from scratch, huh? It's too late, Larry. I just... Go on, nonsense. It's never too late. There's someone at the door. Oh, ignore it. Go away. You might as well answer, Larry. I'm leaving anyhow. No, but listen. I'll be at the shore haven if you want to get in touch with me. Oh, hello, Mrs. Wilson. Why, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, Mr. Billings. How are you? Couldn't be keener, thanks. Well, I was just leaving. I'm sure I'll be seeing you, though. I hope so. Oh, wait. Don't go. Bye, Larry. Say, Larry, I, I met Mr. Billings in the lobby. He, he came all the way from the Habersville National Bank. Bank? Oh, oh, Bank. Well, well, how are you? How are you, Mr. Billings? Yeah, couldn't be keener, thanks. Yeah, that's fine, fine. Well, I got your wireless, Mr. Wilson, and here's your money. Uh, Five thousand? Here you are, sir. Well, I call that service. Yeah, me too. Now, let me see. This 5000 makes you 2700 overdrawn. Overdrawn. When you went away, you had uh, $2,800 on deposit. And we paid 500 for you on that land at Marsh's subdivision. Uh, by the way, here's your deed for that. Oh, uh, and I owed the bank $2,700? The bank was only too glad to accommodate you. Oh, but, 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 but what about those other accounts? Well, in the C account, we have $147,000.83. Oh, would you repeat that, please, so, sort of slowly? Uh, One hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars and eighty-three cents. Uh-huh. That is the community chest account. Huh? The community chest account. <laughs> and naturally, all checks have to be countersigned by Mr. Sims, Miss Brethwaite, two directors of the fund, and yourself. Oh. Now, in the B account, which is the Anti-Vice League Fund, we have... The uh, Anti-Vice League, well, uh... Let's not bother how much we have there. Uh, just as you say, Mr. Wilson. Well, I'd better run along. I trust I've made everything clear. Uh, terribly clear. Just give my greetings to Mr. Uh, Sims and Miss uh, Wet uh, uh, Breathwaite. <laughs> I will indeed. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jeez, the more I learn about Larry Wilson, the more I like termites. Yeah, raising dough for the anti vice league. Boy, you certainly were a stinker. Wasn't I? <laughs> say, wait a minute. Larry Wilson may be a dope. But in Haversville, he's trusted and respected. Yeah, a guy that raises thousands of dollars for a chest certainly ought to be able to raise a little dough for himself. Let's see. That's Pennsylvania. Hey, how about oil? A lot of money in oil. We'll do it, Doc. We'll locate Duke Sheldon. He specializes in oil. We'll wire him to meet us there. Oh, well, wait a minute. What about your wife? My wife? <laughs> she's divorcing me. I mean, a beautiful girl. And in 20 minutes, she's divorcing me. No, I can't let her do that. I need her more than ever now. What for? Well, with the divorce going on, Larry Wilson couldn't sell peanuts in a town like that. Well, well where are you going? To the shore haven. To call in a little woman. Who is it? Open this door. Hey, what is... Take it easy. Open this door, I'll smash it. Hey, what's the idea? Where is she? Where are you hiding her? Say, who are you? You know very well who I am. Where is she, Larry? Come on. Where's who? Where's Kay? She was here with you. Oh, was that Kay? Yes. I looked at the register. <laughs> I looked at the register. Lawrence Wilson and wife. Why, you dirty sneak. Well, after all, she's my wife, isn't she? Well, she may be your wife, but she's engaged to me. She... Holy smoke! Engaged to you? Now, 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 now listen. Why should Kay want to divorce me? Answer me that. You know why. Well, of course I do, but do you... Why, it's written all over you. Kay wasn't married to you. She was married to the Rotary, the Taiwan, as the Lions, and the Greater Habersville Committee. Boy, is that big of me. Uh, will you get rid of your stooge? We'll settle this thing between the two of us. That's nothing to settle. Things and people have changed. All bets are off. From now on, it's every man for himself. You promised Kay a divorce. Why, you dirty double-crossing... You've been asking for this. <laughs> you asked for this. <laughs> I guess you forgot that I was the amateur champ of Boontown County. So long, Larry. <laughs> How are you, pal? Come on, come on now. Come on, wake up, oh. pal. Oh. Come on, wake up. Oh, you might at least have told me his name. Hey, get me up. Where's the phone? What for? I'm going to call my wife. You don't think I'm going to take this line down, do you? Well, you were doing pretty well just a minute ago. So I'm going to take her out to dinner. And just let that guy try and interfere, that's all. Champagne. Here, dear, have some more. 
thank you. I've had enough. And if you ask me, Wilson, so have you. Who asked you? Look, darling, did you have to bring your bodyguard along? Herbert and I are engaged, Larry. Oh, yes. Herbert and you were engaged. Yes. Now, look here, Wilson. Kay and I want to know what you're going to do about the divorce. The divorce? Oh, Kay can have the divorce. She can? In a month or six weeks. But I'm opposed to this unseemly haste. Well, somebody might get the idea my wife didn't like me. You can't fool me, Wilson. It's not Kay you're thinking of. It's the Chamber of Commerce. Mm -hmm. Of course, I might have known. Six weeks, you said. And by an odd coincidence, that happens to be election time for president of the Chamber of Commerce. Now, wait. Larry, you're just afraid your divorce will hurt your chances. Well, I'm not going to ruin my life so you can win an election. No, I should say not. Very well, then. Unless Kay comes back to Haversville with me and for six weeks palms herself off as my devoted and loving wife, I'll fight the case. I feel it my duty. Oh, he feels it is duty, Herbert. We're sunk. We'll have to give in. Herb, you're taking my wife. The least you can do is to give me the Chamber of Commerce. Oh. All right. You win. Oh, thanks, Herb. <laughs> this is your hotel, Wilson? That's right, Herb. Well, good night, Kay, dear. Good night, Larry. Kay, do you think, uh, that is, if Herbert doesn't mind, uh, if I kissed you goodbye... Hey, now, listen. Oh, it's all right, Herbert. It doesn't mean anything. Certainly not. Now, just, just lean this way a little, dear. That's the girl. Huh. All right, Wilson. <laughs> hey, Wilson, that's enough now. I said that's enough. Hey, now, look here, Wilson. Say, what do you think they did? Hey, now, cut it out. Let her alone. Oh, for heaven's sake. Our stars will return with Act Two of I Love You Again in a moment. I hear you were visiting at 20th Century Fox this week, Libby. That's right, John. They were celebrating the winning of the Academy Award with Dow Zanuck's great picture, Gentleman's Agreement. But they're not resting on their laurels. Their latest is a domestic comedy about a babysitter. <laughs> it's simply hilarious. That must be uh, sitting pretty. That's the name, all right. And Clifton Webb is the sitter who completely reorganizes the home life of Robert Young and Maureen O'Hara. A case for gossiping neighbors. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Especially when Maureen is found in a nighty talking with Clifton. I remember that scene. You know, that gown was very carefully chosen. Uh, satin, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Because the texture photographed so beautifully. Maureen told me that during the shooting, the hem got quite soiled from the soundstage, but the wardrobe department fixed it up before you could say, retake tomorrow. With gentle lux care, no doubt. That's right. And after luxing, it looked just as fresh and sparkling as new. But that didn't surprise Maureen because she insists on Lux care herself for all her personal things. And now the new tiny diamonds of Lux make it easier than ever for women to keep pretty lingerie lovely longer. They're so sheer and so tiny, you just know they're the right care for delicate lingerie. They're so fast. Why, they practically melt into suds the instant they touch the water. Richer, too. Make thick, abundant suds that last and last. And they do more for you. Remove soil which other kinds of suds can't. Leave things cleaner, fresher. And make pretty under things last twice as long. Tests prove that. So why risk wrong washing methods? Anything safe in water is safe in Lux. Here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. Act two of I Love You Again, starring William Powell as Larry Wilson and Anne Southern as Kay. <laughs> Larry Wilson, amnesia victim and confidence man extraordinary, is piecing together the puzzle of a life he doesn't remember. And with a wife like Kay as one of the principal parts, he looks forward to finishing the picture. With Kay, he's just getting off the train in Haversville, Doc Ryan two steps to the rear. Hey, Larry, look! It's a welcoming committee. For me? Of course, you know you're a hero. Hi there. Uh, great to be back. I feel fine. Larry, darling, let me 
see you. Oh, oh. Oh, Larry, let me kiss you, darling. Excellent, excellent. I got the wife with me. Scram, babe. What, dear? Hello, Mother. Hey, darling. Mother? Oh, oh, Mother. <laughs> well, how are, how are you, Mother? Gee, doesn't she look wonderful, Kay? My mother usually looks all right. <laughs> You're looking wonderful yourself, Larry, but you changed. What is it? Larry, here's Mayor Carver. Hello, my boy. Welcome home. Well, Mayor Carver, how's the old chief executive? Uh, <laughs> Haversville is mighty proud of you, my boy. Well, thanks, Mayor. And now, Larry, use my proud privilege to present a gift from the municipal band, a solid silver bugle. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Much obliged, fellas. And now we'll all sing the Hapersville Town song, your own brilliant composition. Yeah, huh? Good. Larry, suppose you start us off with a fanfare on your new bugle, huh? Fanfare? Bugle? Me? Go ahead, son. Oh, yes. Well, well, uh, uh, uh now, uh, well, you see, uh, you see, I... Oh, oh, oh. Larry! Good oh, heavens, he's standing there! Get him there! Dr. Ryan, quick! He just couldn't stand all this happiness. Get an ambulance. Larry. Larry, are you awake? Oh, come in, Mother. What time is it? Oh, after ten. You feel better? Oh, I feel fine. Larry, now about Kay. I know the whole story, and it's ridiculous. The idea. You in this room and Kay over there across the hall. For a whole year. I don't know how you could do such a thing. Neither do I. Well, we are going to change all that. I've come to stay for a while. I'm taking the porch room, which should have been a nursery long ago. Oh, Mother. Now, don't argue. Who's arguing? Well, but you can't win Kay back with a stuffed squirrel. A stuff... What? Those animals you're always stuffing. You've got to stop it, Larry. Mother, believe me, I'll never stuff another animal as long as I live. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. Kay. Kay. Yes? It's me, Larry. What do you want? Well, I... I'm hungry. Well, look in the ice box. Well, all right, dear... Don't you bother. I'll get my own food. That is, if I don't faint again. Good night, dear. Oh, all right. Wait a minute. Would you like some eggs? More than anything in the world. Almost. Well, come on down to the kitchen. Kay, you don't know what this means to me. Never mind the sentiment. We're going down for eggs. Here you are, darling. More toast? No. More coffee? No. More champagne? Yes. Good. You know, the last time we had champagne in this house was three years ago on New Year's Eve. That bottle my mother gave us for Christmas. I wish you would forget about the past, Kay. You know, the fact of the matter is, I changed quite a bit lately. Oh, Larry. You couldn't change any more than one of your stuffed owls could change. But, Kay... Oh, you know, I feel awfully good. Oh. Oh, we good. See you, darling. Gee, that's fine. Here, let me fill your glass. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sort of sorry. Sorry? But I'm not in love with you anymore. Because if I were still in love with you, I'd be awfully in love with you right now. Kay, I'd like to show you the most wonderful game of two-handed post office. <laughs> I think I'd better drink the coffee. Yeah, but, but listen, Kay. No, no, I'm in this house simply because of our agreement to convince the general public that I'm still your wife. All right, convince me. I'm one of the public. <laughs> that strikes me as a pretty foul thing to say about the public. Now, eat, eat your eggs. Oh, I'm not hungry. Oh, you're not. You got me out of bed, spoil my teeth. But you're not hungry. Well, not really. I... You don't want to eat your nice scrambled eggs? No, dear. Then how would you like to wear them over your ears? Hey. Uh, hello, Mrs. Wilson. How's my patient? Insufferable. Uh, hiya, Larry. How's the... Uh... Hey, what do you got in your head? Scrambled eggs. What'd you think? <laughs> I didn't know. Hey, look. What'd you find out in town? Oh, it's pie. The town's loaded with dough, just right for an oil boom. Duke Sheldon's at the hotel, and he's going to plant the oil tomorrow. Fine. 
Now, what about me? Uh, <clears throat> you are the manager of a big pottery works here. I make pots? Yeah, you may not have any money, but you certainly got plenty of pots. Pots. Just what I've always wanted, a whole lot of pots. <laughs> Welcome back. The overtimes have been the same with us. Oh, thanks, boys. Thanks very much. But uh, right now, uh, we've all got our little jobs to attend to. That's right, boys. Back on the job. Yeah. Mr. Wilson, your wife is here. My wife? Well, send her in. <laughs> uh, outside, everybody. Uh, your job, please. <laughs> okay. Hello, Larry. Well, what would you like to hit me with this morning? I can recommend the inkwell. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize. You were very aggravating. Well, then I'll apologize. I should have ducked. Mm-hmm. Larry, today's the 15th. Huh? Oh, oh yes, yes. The 15th, of course. <laughs> Don't you know what that means? Yeah, why, uh, yeah, it, 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 it means that uh, tomorrow's the 16th. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. The things you can think of to keep from writing a check. Check? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes the yes, 15th. Yes. Well, I guess we've established that all right. Hmm? Yeah. Just, just slip my mind, Kay. You know, all the excitement of getting home and... Uh, mm-hmm. Let me see now. Uh, that would be uh, how much? Uh, you know perfectly well how much. Well, uh, uh, what about uh, $200? What? Oh, just for the time being, of course. And if you, if you run short, just call on me. Oh, well, don't wake me up. Let me dream. Well, goodbye. I'm going shopping. Oh, no. No, we're going shopping. You need a man's advice. No, thank you. The last time I went shopping with you, I ended up in a cut price, Mother Hubbard. And today, you'll end up in a creation by Charmaine. Where did you learn about Charmaine? Huh? Oh, uh, uh, I I, I read about it on the boat. On the boat, hmm? Hmm. Do you know how much a Charmaine creation might cost? Ooh, 200, 300, what's the difference? Larry, do you mind if I just faint quietly? Tea, ah, yes, tea. Nothing like tea after a hard day shopping. Yeah, just look at the rain out there. And here we sit warm and cozy. I love this place. So do I, now. Hey, look. See those tea leaves? Mm-hmm. Want your fortune told? Please. Well, I uh, I see someone in your life. It's a man. <laughs> a tall, dashing, handsome man. Uh, with a striped tie, like mine. Go on. Well, he's uh, tall and handsome and very dashing. Yes, yeah, that's what puzzles me. The dashing. It's there all right, and I don't understand it. Oh, it's nothing at all. Give me your cup. I tell fortunes, too, you know. Well, see anybody I know? Mm Mm-hmm. It's a woman. Wonderful. What's she look like? Suppose you tell me. Well, she's about uh, five foot five, uh, lovely complexion, and hair just like yours. Larry, what is she like? Who? The woman who talks about Charmaine. And dancing and being dashing. Where did you meet her? On the boat? Uh, yes. Sort of. Well, of course, you don't want to talk about it. Well, there's, there's really not much to talk about. Uh, I mean, uh, nothing's really happened yet. Oh, but it will, Larry. I'm sure of it. Honey, if you're sure of it, that's good enough for me. Well, I, I know it's none of my business, but I, I've been worried that you might have changed like this, you know, to please me and maybe patch things up. But of course, that's out of the question. My plans are all made with Herbert. Hey, have you ever taken a good look at Herbert? Now, listen here, Larry. Well, take a look at him now. He's just outside the window making faces at us. Oh, my goodness, I had a date with Herbert. He'll never forgive me standing out there in the rain. Wait, you can have him cleaned and pressed. He'll look as good as new. You be quiet. Evening, Mother dear. Terry, listen. Herbert's been here all evening. He just left. I don't like it. And neither do I, Mother. But what can I do? Well, you can go and speak to Kay about it. Where is she? In her room. And if you have to, kick in the door. Why, Mother, you pioneer woman. <laughs> I'll see you later. Who is 
it. It's me, Larry. Open the door or I'll kick it down. What? Open the door, you hear me? Well, it is open. Uh, oh. Hello. <laughs> I thought it was locked. Well, suppose it had been. Well, I'd have kicked it down. <laughs> what for? Well, so I could come in. Larry, I've just spent two hours packing things up with Herbert. Don't you think you've got me into enough trouble for today? No. <gasps> Sometimes you remind me of a high school boy on a street corner whistling at girls. Well, it's romantic to whistle at the opposite sex. Birds do it. Love birds. <laughs> Love birds don't whistle. They coo. They whistle. Sort of a low, cooing whistle. Uh, uh, like this. <laughs> Gets you, doesn't it? Not particularly. <laughs> I once knew of a case where a female lovebird locked a male lovebird out of her nest. No. Mm. Oh, he stood outside and cooed for hours. It was pitiful. <laughs> he finally lost his temper and he kicked the door of the cage down. And what do you think the female lovebird did then? Gave him a sharp peck at the base of the skull. Not at all. She put her soft little wing around him. And she sighed and laid him an egg. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mary. Mary, please leave me alone. Okay, what have I done? Well, I, I suppose you didn't take me out and buy me the most expensive clothes in town. Is that bad? And I suppose you didn't say nice things and pay me dozens of compliments and try your best to please me. Oh, well, when, when you put it that way, I guess I've been a heel. And I wish you'd stop it. I want you to be yourself. Your owl-stuffing, speech-making, pompous old self. What, you, you're upset because I'm acting as though I found you very attractive? Yes. But you are very attractive. There you go again. Now, look. I've got something to tell you, and I don't want you to say another word. Not a word? No. Just, just keep quiet, you understand? Well? Well, it's your pride, that's all. You're losing me, so suddenly I seem worth holding on to. But you don't love me, and you never did. Public opinion's the only thing you love. Public opinion, public buildings, public positions. And that's why my door is going to stay locked as long as I'm in this house. Now, if you've got anything to say, please make a choice. Oh, you! You get out of here! We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. of I Love You Again will continue in a moment. We're delighted to have as our guest this evening a Hollywood newspaper correspondent as glamorous as she is famous, Miss Sheila Graham. Sheila brings us some exciting news of the film capital. Well, Mr. Keeley, our first item concerns Mr. and Mrs. Van Johnson, who left today for Honolulu on their first real honeymoon. With all our heartiest good wishes. And another big piece of news is the release of Frank Capra's picture, State of the Union. The Pulitzer Prize hit starring Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, and Van Johnson. Well, it's a wonderful romantic story with a very funny political background. And very smart timing on the part of metro Golden mayor to release it now. I think the picture has some of the best laughs of the year. <laughs> and no wonder. Frank Capra, the producer-director, Spencer Tracy, and Catherine Hepburn together hold eight Academy Awards. You know, Mr. Keeley, Van Johnson makes a fine reporter. Of course, the newspaper angle is especially interesting for me. No doubt you enjoyed Angela Lansbury's performance as the beautiful and powerful publisher. I sure did. And when I visited Angela during the production of State of the Union, I found we had something in common. What was that? Our stockings take a lot of punishment. Angela seems a calm sort of person on the set, but oh boy, she's just as active as I am. And that's terribly hard on stockings. So I told her that I used luck. And Mr. Kennedy will be interested to know that she does, too. I guess that solves your problem, hmm? Right. In fact, Metro-Golden-Mare cares for stockings just the way we career girls do, with luck. 
Well, here's another piece of news that's worth headlining, Miss Graham. The new tiny diamonds of Lux are here. Wonderful as Lux has always been, it's actually been improved. It's better than ever. These tiny sheer diamonds are so much faster and richer. They make stockings last twice as long. Tests prove. So smart girls steer clear of strong soaps or cake soap rubbing. That extra wear you get from Lux Care is just like getting an extra pair of stockings every time you buy a pair. Thank you for coming tonight, Miss Sheila Graham. Back now to our producer, William Keeley. Act three of I Love You Again, starring William Powell as Larry Wilson and Ann Southern as Kay. <laughs> has made up her mind. The door's been closed on Larry, and he's shut out of her life. In his office the next afternoon, Larry decides to go through with his oil swindle and call it quits. It's a cinch, pal. Duke Sheldon's got an option on all the land surrounding yours at Marsh Creek. What about the oil? Duke planted it all over the place. It's oozing up through the creek to beat the band. But it might take weeks for anybody to see it out there in that jungle. Yeah, we'll have to fix that somehow. Yeah. Marsh Creek. I have to get the yokels down there. Did you get a line on any of them? Oh, did I? Take a look at this. Hmm. Leonard Hartspur. Income of two hundred and ten grand. Edward Littlejohn, one hundred and thirty-one thousand. If we can only get a couple of these boys to go swimming in the creek. Yeah, swimming in oil up to their necks. But how are we going to do it? Oh, Mr. Wilson. Uh, yes, Miss Sting. Is it all right for Corporal Bielinson now? It's Thursday, you know. Huh? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes, that's right. Uh, so it is. Uh, uh, who is Corporal Bielinson? Who is Corporal Bielinson? <laughs> Tell him, Miss Sting. He has a Ranger medallion, two silver stars, and a community stripe. You don't say. You may come in, Corporal. Corporal Bielinson reporting to Scout Leader Wilson. Scout leader? Who's your scout leader? Uh, uh, good afternoon, Corporal. It's three o'clock, Mr. Wilson. The troop's outside already. Oh, uh, uh, where are they going? That's up to Mr. Wilson, sir. Oh, no, 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 no. He, he can't go this afternoon. But it's Hawksburg's test today, sir. No, no, it's out of the question. Wait, uh, uh, did you say Hawksburg? Yes, sir. Leonard Hawksburg's little boy? Sure, Junior. He's been waiting for you to get back to take the test for first class ranger. And so will little John. <laughs> Little John, of course. And I've worked out a special test for today. I saw a sort of uh, a test by water. You remember, Doc, we were just talking about the water test? Why, sure, very interesting. That's splendid, sir. But first, how about shooting the butt? All right, I'll fade it. <laughs> Dr. Ryan. Yeah, I'm ashamed of you, Corporal, gambling at your age. Oh, you don't understand, sir. Mr. Wilson taught us how to trail a deer, and we call it shooting the butt. Well, what do you know? But today, Corporal, we have a new test. Brand new. Really, sir? Oh, yes, indeed. You tell the men that we're leaving in ten minutes for Marsh Creek. Mr. Wilson, sir. Yes, Corporal? We've just taken the test, sir, and I'd like to report that the whole troop is all over oil. Oil? Well, where did you get oil on you? In the creek, sir. Oh, my corporal, this is terrible. Tell the troop to report to the homes. I imagine their fathers will find a way to take it off. Troop 7, report home and get the oil washed off. Well, come in, come in, Mr. Hawksburg. Come in, gentlemen. Sit right down. Well, how are you, Larry? Yes. Oh, fine. Up, uh, uh, this is Dr. Ryan. Uh, Mr. Hawksburg, doctor. How are you? How do you do? And this is Mr. Little John and Mr. Beeland. How do you How do, you do, you do Doctor? Uh, Larry, I'll come right to the point. Uh, we want to do something concrete for you to show our appreciation of what you've done for Haber's oh, oh, come now, gentlemen. I've done nothing. Larry, uh, you own a piece of land here near Marsh Creek. Uh, yes, I believe I do. Well, the state is building a new highway, and we've brought some pressure to see that it's built on your land. Now, we can take it off your hands at a good profit. Well, that, that, that's awfully decent of you. <laughs> I only paid 2500 for it. What would you say to a check for $10,000? What? Why, that's 300% of my investment. Oh, it's too much. We feel you've got it coming to you, Larry. What? Why, you, you make me feel like a profiteer. Hey, excuse uh, me, gentlemen. Someone oh, at the door. Yes. Well, Larry, what do you say? It's a deal, gentlemen. Splendid, uh, splendid. I've got a check right here. I must see Mr. Wilson at once, sir. It's a matter of the utmost importance. But he's busy. He can't be disturbed. Stand aside, sir. Now, which one of you gentlemen is uh, Mr. Wilson? Uh, I am Mr. Wilson, sir. Thank you, sir. 
My name is Sheldon. Colonel uh, E.J. Sheldon, sir. Oh, how do you do, Colonel? <laughs> Mr. Wilson, you're owner of Marsh's subdivision, I believe. Why, yes. Uh, uh, splendid, splendid. Now, I'm prepared, sir, to make you a handsome offer for that land. $25,000. What? Do you mean that? I am not in the habit of joking, sir. Well... <laughs> But Colonel Sheldon must have heard about the new road. Well, new well, road? Well, no. I know of no road. I'm in the gravel business, Mr. Wilson, and your land contains valuable deposits of gravel. Gravel? On my land? Oh, it's ridiculous. Of course it is. Larry, we'll match his offer dollar for dollar. You will? Oh, why, that, that, that's wonderful. Larry, what are you doing? You're not selling those lots, you won't. No, no, not yet, Kay, but uh, it looks like I will. Do you know what's on the land? Oh, yes, dear. Gravel. Gravel, my foot. It's oil. Oil? Oh, uh, just a wild rumor, I'm sure, sir. These things start up, and before you know it... This is a wild rumor. This is oil. Gobs of it. I just heard about it. Oil. Colonel Sheldon, you just tried to swindle one of our leading citizens. Permit me to inform you, sir, that I have options on all the surrounding land. I'll give you $100,000 for a half interest, Mr. Wilson. Now, look here, Sheldon. I couldn't think of it. $200,000. Oh, wait a minute. Colonel Sheldon, suppose we buy you up. With uh, what, sir? With hard cash. How much do you want for your option? Well, uh, I own four parcels. Uh, I'll take 50000 each. All right, it's a deal. We'll meet later tonight and sign all the papers. Yeah. Very good, sir. Yeah. Yeah. was great work, pal. A clean profit of 200,000 smackers. Yeah. Say, what happened to Kay? Kay? Oh, I saw her go out a minute ago with a letter in her hand. Hey, that reminds me. How did she know about the oil? That's what I want to find out. Okay. Kay, wait a second. Hello, Larry. <laughs> I deduced from the envelope that you're going to mail a letter. Yes, to Herbert. I'm still so mad I could explode. Those crooks pretending to be your friends. And Herbert's no better. He acted as though I were a common thief. So I ought to be glad of a chance to pick a pocket legally. Oh, so that was how you knew. Mm, Herbert wanted me to get the land from you. Larry, you're the only honest one in the whole crowd. Me? (laughs) Yes, you. You're really too good for this town. No, not really. Well, here's the mailbox. And that's that. Exit Herbert? Exit Herbert. I want to walk. Let's go up to the top of the hill, shall we? Yeah. Delighted. Isn't it a lovely view from here? Oh, Larry. Don't tell me you've forgotten this place. Forgotten? How could I forget it? Remember what you once told me here. Oh... Vaguely. You said, Kay, darling, marriage is the soundest investment two people can make. Oh. Kay, what ever made you marry me? Because I felt that underneath that watch chain with all its large pins and trophies, there was another person, an exciting person, the sort of man I dreamt about marrying. He wasn't really there, though, was he? Yes, but I didn't find him for such a long time. I'm sorry I didn't find him sooner. Don't apologize for what you thought about me. You're right. You're still right. No, I was terribly wrong. But I was afraid of falling in love with you again. If you were afraid then, you should be twice as afraid now. I don't understand that, Mary. I hope you never will. Well, I... I think we'd better go. No, wait a minute. If there's anything that turns my stomach, it's a man who acts noble. Noble? Yes. You know darn well you love me. You're just being noble and giving me up because something's wrong. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. Okay. Ever since you got off that boat, you've been trying your darndest to make me fall in love with you, and now you have. Now I'm going to do the chasing. And believe me, brother, before I'm through, you're going to know you've been chased. Kiss me. Well. I know it right now. You gotta get over to Duke's room. All those big shots are gonna be there, and we gotta. Larry, what's the matter with you? Doc, how'd you like to work in my pottery mill? Huh? Yeah, making pots. 
chance to eat regular and sleep regular. Maybe have a little home of your own. A porch, a garden. See? Sounds wonderful. Glad you like it, Doc. Because that's what we're going to do. Well, but we, we can't stay here after the oil deal. The oil deal is off, Doc. But, but, but what about Duke? Yes, there's, there's Duke to consider. I don't think Duke cares much for home and the kiddies. He's a wee bit mercenary. Yeah, and he likes money, too. <laughs> However, I may as well get it over with. It may be a tough fight, but I'm not afraid. Not much or not. No, no, no. Don't do it, Larry. I seen you fight one fight and you were awful. He, he'll tear you to bits. Let me go with you just in case. Oh, this is my job. I'll phone you when it's all over, Doc, if I'm able. No, he'll be murdered. He'll... Hey, Mrs. Wilson! Mrs. Wilson! Mrs. Wilson, where are you? <laughs> What do you mean the deal's off? What kind of a double cross have you and Ryan cooked up? I'm through with rackets, Duke, that's all. Look, friend, if this is a rib, it's not a rib, Duke. And it's not a double cross. I'm staying here in Haversville with my wife. Save your breath, pal. You and that dame are up to something. You're wrong. She doesn't know a thing about it. Hello, darling. Oh, Kay. She don't know, huh? Kay, what are you doing here? It's all right, Mary. I just had a talk with Dr. Ryan. He told me everything about you. What? Larry, I had to let her in. I couldn't help it. Shut up. Kay, I want you to go home. Nobody's going home. My friend, I'm going to brain you. You overgrown bull, don't you dare lay a hand on him. Shut your trap, madam. (gasps) Now, get this, Wilson. If you and this Tootsie want to play house when we get the cash, okay. But first we get the cash. You can't give him orders, you crook. That's right, lady, I'm a crook. Now, what do you think he is, a Bible salesman? I don't care if he was an axe murderer. That's all finished. Lady, generally speaking, I never sock a dame, but I'm inclined to make an exception for you. All right, Duke, you asked for it. Ooh. Okay, pal. Oh! How dare you? You killed him. <laughs> I hope so. Water, water. Give him water. Get the water pitcher. Oh, Larry. Larry, oh. darling, look at me. Oh. Here, here's the water. <laughs> Help. Help. I'm drowning. Oh, Larry. Help. My poor darling. Oh. oh, oh, Kay. Kay. How did you get on the boat? Oh. This is all your fault, Ryan. Your drunken behavior was inexcusable. Hey. Hey, it's coming back. Just like on the boat. Oh, lie still, darling. Don't talk. You'll be all right in a minute. All right, Davis. Get up and quit stalling. Davis! Uh, were, were you addressing me, sir? What do you think? But I, I'm afraid I don't know you. Holy Ike, he's got him again. Them amnesias. But this, this isn't the boat. Well, well, what's happened? Hey, is he loony? Did I knock him goofy? Worse. Oh, you've ruined everything. Hey, Davis. George. Georgie, don't you know me? Duke Sheldon. Duke Sheldon? I'm very flattered to meet you, Your Highness. Look, look, look. Now, come on. Come on, pull yourself together. we got a big deal on. A big deal? Well, if if you call at my office, sir, I'll be very glad to show you our full line of pots. Pots? Hey, the guy's nuts. I'm getting out of here. No, no, no. Let's get out of my way. I'm getting out of here. Goodbye, Your Highness. You come back here. You can't get away with it. Larry. Larry, darling. Yes, dear? You've forgotten everything, haven't you? Of course not. I mean, when he hit you, you're Lawrence Wilson again. Do you suppose if you got hit on the head again, you might be George Davis? No, no, wait, wait. Put down that face. I've got to do it, darling. No, 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 no. Listen to me, listen to me. Well? Kay, dear. Kay. Well? Oh. Oh, oh darling. In just a moment, our stars will return for their curtain call. Tell me, Libby, why the pencil and paper? Well, I've just been figuring that the average housewife with a family of four washes at least 329 dishes a week. And that doesn't count the silver or the pots and pans. 
I should think when she went to sleep, she'd see dishes instead of sheep. <laughs> well, dishwashing is depressing to some women, but modern housewives have discovered how easy it can be with the right kind of suds. And that's where the new Lux steps right in and takes over. The new diamonds of Lux are so sheer and so tiny, they're faster. You know more than turn on the water, and presto, you have mountains of suds. Such thick, abundant suds. Just compare them with any other suds you've ever used. They're richer. What makes these new diamonds especially wonderful for dishes is the way the suds last and last. So they do more work. Tests prove that, too. Lux washes up to twice as many dishes as the same weight of any of ten other leading soaps tested. When you use these new diamonds, you needn't bother about drying the dishes. Lux suds rinse so completely, dishes drain sparkling dry without wiping. Yet Lux is so kind to your hands... They stay as soft and smooth as if you never washed a dish in your life. So get these new Lux Diamonds tomorrow, sure. Try this really modern way to wash dishes. We return you now to William Keeley. Before they get away from us, let's turn the spotlight back on William Powell and Ann Southern, who meet you as they are in real life. You know, with tonight's performance, you two certainly put yourselves, well, uh, way above the Snow Bunny class. Oh, thanks, Phil, but... Huh? <laughs> What's this Snow Bunny business? Easter's over. Well, I'm sure that Anne, as one of Hollywood's more enthusiastic skiers, knows just what I mean. Of course. A Snow Bunny, and I'm certainly in that class, is an amateur who goes up to the mountains with a $100 ski outfit and leaves nothing but sits marks on the ski slope. <laughs> Six marks? Are they what I think they are? Yes, Bill. Just what you think they are. I take it, Bill, that unlike Anne, you aren't much of a winter sportsman. Well, when it comes to leaving six marks, I can do all right with a deck chair down at Palm Springs. (laughs) (laughs) How do you know you wouldn't enjoy seeing, Bill, if you've never tried it? Oh, I tried it once. And how did you end up? That's how I'll end up. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Perhaps, honey, you're better off at Palm Springs after all. Well, I think so. So uh, let's just let the skis slide. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and meanwhile, uh, let's hear what you're doing next week in the spirit of a skili. Next Monday night, we bring you the absorbing story of a fascinating woman, as human as any character you've ever known. One who finds herself trapped between the love of two men. It's 20th Century Fox's deeply moving drama, Daisy Kenyon. And our stars are two of the screen's great favorites, Ida Lupino and Dana Andrews. Well, Daisy Canyon is obviously going to be a real treat to your listeners. Good Good night, and thanks for the most entertaining hour. Viva Brothers Company, the makers of Lux Lakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday evening when the Lux Radio Theater presents Dana Andrews and Ida Lupino in Daisy Kenyon. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies, here's how to make some pocket money and do a good turn, too. Save all fats left over from frying or roasting. Your dealer will pay you a good price for them. Now, maybe you're reusing fats in cooking. Well, that's fine. But remember, even when fat is no longer any good for you, it is still good for industrial uses. We're facing the biggest shortage of fats and oils in history. That's why your government asks you to keep a tin handy, save every drop of used fat, and turn it in promptly. William Powell and Ann Southern appeared by arrangement with Metro Golden Mayor, producers of Homecoming, starring Clark Gable and Lana Turner. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John Milton Kennedy, reminding you to join us again next Monday night to hear Daisy Kenyon with Ida Lupino and Dana Andrews. Pepsodent won by three to one. Yes, in a recent survey, families throughout America compared new Pepsodent toothpaste with a brand they've been using at home. By an overwhelming average of three to one, they preferred new Pepsodent with Irium over any other brand they tried. They said new Pepsodent toothpaste tastes better, makes breath cleaner, makes teeth brighter. 
Yes, with families who made comparison tests. Pepsodent won by three to one. Be sure to listen next Monday night to the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Daisy Kenyon with Dana Andrews and Ida Lupino. Stay tuned for My Friend Irma, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.